In today's Money Talks with Axios Wealth Advisors, we are discussing the best ways to manage money as a married couple. And I'm joined now by Axios founder, Chris Van Steel. Thanks so much for coming in, Chris. Thanks for having me. This is such a great topic, too, because when couples tie the knot, often they start talking about money, finances, and that, that likely has already happened before you get married. So what about combining finances? Is this a good move or a bad move? In general, I think it's a very good move because you want transparency and then you want openness in your relationship, in your marriage, whatever it might be. But uh, th th there's certainly, at, at least I, I would like to recommend, some privacy, you know, right. some sort of a individualized account for yourself. Even if you're buying a birthday or Mother Day, Mother's Day gift That's... for your spouse, you don't want the receipt on the credit card that they look at. Right. Well, you know, we were just talking about this, too, because that's, that's exactly it. Like, Christmas gifts come around, and we're like, how are we going to pull this off? Because we have a shared account. Um, I was talking with a coworker here, and he said they met later in life, he and his wife, and so they had already had split accounts. Is that okay to keep them separate? I think it's okay. Um, again, I, I would use some sort of a aggregation software, maybe, to give each other some idea of, what's where and how it got there because at the end of the day you are a team mm -hmm. and how you right. approach your retirement or planning to educate your children should be done mindful of each other. Also adding a, a transfer on death label to an account, a TOD label, is, is a way of adding certain beneficiary designations where even if it is separate we at least know if something happens to one or another it's clearly belonging to that spouse and it's designated for them. All right, so let's say you get married, you create these joint accounts, and all of a sudden as you're learning more about your partner, you have realized that the person you married is a big spender. They like to do a lot of shopping or whatever their thing is. How do you go about approaching that? And, and we have kind of like a marriage checklist here too. Yeah, nice checklist and our wedding photo. Yeah, oh, this uh. is you, oh gosh, how great. <laughs> but. Uh, so super spenders can be very tough. And, yeah. and we have plenty of clients that have gone through that and we, and we watch them. The reality is if we're counting on each other financially and you're really dipping into that pot, you're causing me harm, right. causing me stress. So it's very open dialogue and conversations that have to happen. In fact, I think on the very first like week of your show, there was a, a marriage counselor, a couples counselor, therapist that was on who even talked about when getting together, money's one of those topics that can be a a relationship ender. Right, it really can. So, so we have to be able to talk about that. You can see financial pain on someone's face. Yeah. So let's talk about the marriage checklist. So you, you're sure. getting married. There's a lot that needs to go into this. It's not just love and, and partnership. There's a lot here that comes with like taxes and finances. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the legal planning aspect of all this, what do you recommend? So making sure your beneficiaries are in order is a huge must, mm -hmm. especially with children. Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania only designates a small piece of what you own for your spouse, and then your spouse and children are supposed to split the rest. Wow. So you need a will to supersede that. Okay. So, so meeting with an attorney and going through that conversation is extremely important. If you're buying a house, married or not, if you're buying a house together, I'd have an agreement with how we're gonna settle that equity in case there is a breakup. And then I do tell folks a lot about, at the bottom, prenuptial agreements. They can be very, sort of like, glamorized or, or, or dramatized in Hollywood, but right. It's nothing more than an agreement, and you can target that to mirror exactly what Pennsylvania statutes would have said. But if you do that when you're madly in love with each other, it saves a lot of time, energy, and stress should there be a failure in the relationship. So you encourage couples. I, see, I've always, I've always thought about that as we're talking about the breakup before you know we're even walking down the aisle. Is that, is that a, I, to me, it just doesn't seem like a positive conversation. It can be very productive and very constructive. Yeah. It's a lot easier if it comes from a third party like me bringing it up okay. <laughs> than coming from you know, a, a spouse or significant other. Sometimes it can be intimidating, but if you come from a place of love and, and, and someone you know, brings it up as this is in your best interest, mm -hmm. then it's an easier conversation because you're probably going to agree to everything anyway. You're yeah. going to say what's fair, and you would do exactly what's fair for someone you love. Right. And when you agree to that, it's a very simple it's document. Simple. It's not that expensive either. Uh, we were talking before about super spenders. And if you start to notice that your spouse, your partner is spending a lot of extra money, is it then okay to create two separate accounts? Is that in your best interest so that you can pay all your bills on time and make sure that you have enough money at the end of the month? If it's getting to the point where there's toxicity or, or real challenge in the marriage, I would say putting up some guardrails is okay, but mm -hmm. be open about it. Don't do it secretively. Um, 
If on the other hand, you're doing that and not addressing the root problem, that's a challenge and that's where maybe the financial advisor, but oftentimes couples counseling or relationship, right. someone else needs to be in that picture, helping the super spender understand how their behaviors are affecting the relationship and the long-term viability of retirement or even keeping your house if it gets bad enough. If it's that bad, yeah. Some really great tips and advice. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you brought this up too. Absolutely. Some of the name changes, titles to property, all these things that we need to consider when getting married. All very important and more good engagement pictures from the Axios team. Oh, this is so great. We're getting to meet your whole work family. I love this. Thank you so much. Thank really you. great stuff.